Now on the YouTube, I am the Top Man and welcome back to some more Football Manager. We've started our third season, guys, with Manchester City and uh, I've got a couple of results in the league to show you. I've got a couple of pre-season results, as you can probably already see the results in the league. Um, I've got a couple of other things and bits and bobs and pieces that I want to actually show you guys. So without further ado, why don't we get on with the episode. The biggest piece of news for this episode, guys, is the fact that I have taken over as England manager. And to my... There was two jobs available. There was the England manager and there was the England under-20s. I actually applied for both of them thinking, you know, I'm probably not going to get the England job. I would actually prefer to get the under-20s um, if, of course, you can work it like that. I'm not quite sure if you can or not, but um, either which way, they offered me the England one, but they then offered me full control over the England setup. That is the under-21s, the under-19s, you, you know, the under whatever the hell it is. What was it? The B team, under 21s, under 20s and under 19s, they give me control over absolutely everything. Of course, I can't deal with absolutely everything and I'm only dealing with the senior squad at the moment. But I am now England manager, how ledge is that? Alright, next thing I want to cover is of course transfers. There's been quite a lot of activity going out. Most of it is loan deals and most of it, you know, is, is stuff that I needed to do. I needed to sell players because, of course, they've reached the age of which I can't keep them anymore. I can't play them anymore, so I may as well make money off them. Um, firstly, the, the players going out. Um, well, no, firstly, the players coming in because some of the players come in go went out as well. So, firstly, Augustine Oloch, I think it is, um, this guy, four and a half star potential, this guy was actually wanted by both Manchester United and Tottenham, but I pilfered him, and he's been playing really well so far. If we look at his player stats, thank you uh, to my cousin who actually showed me this, but all the games that he's played, you can see. So at the moment, English under-18s, that's where he is, he's in the England under-18s. He's had one appearance, four goals, and an assist. Holy shit. That is amazing. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that is amazing for this guy. Yeah, he's only had the one appearance, but my God, did he show what he was capable of. That is Augustine Olawak. Olawak? Olawatch? Olawatch? I don't know how you pronounce that. Uh, in the comments section below, if you do know how to pronounce that. Uh, is, a, is a regen? Or a regen? I don't know why, you know... Regan, it's kind of an inside joke actually is, is Regan, so yeah, it's, it's a regen anyway. Next guy, Russell Thornton, another guy that actually captured the eye of a couple of the big clubs out there, but also captured my eye. Uh, this guy, as you can see, 1.8 millions worth at 16 years of age, five star potential. Let's have a quick look at his coach report here. He's a decent, cham he's a decent championship player. Um, but he becoming leaving Premier Division striker in the future. It's another striker, but he is 16 years old, so he's younger than the other strikers that I've got kicking around the place. And I'm thinking this season I might switch my uh, my formation around just a tad. Uh, but I've got him 3.3 million. Uh, yes, it's quite a lot, but I reckon that 3.3 million, you know, in in years to come, will be absolutely nothing, and I can sell him on for a lot more than that. Andy Williams came up from my youth setup. And this guy is going to be amazing. Another striker of 16 years of age. He is the one that's probably going to be taking the reins up front. Uh, interestingly enough though, Augustine is another striker. Uh, but he's an attacking mid-left as well. And a guy that can dribble and finish. That's, that's great. That is good to have. Um... Where was I? Andy Williams. Again, he's in the youth setup. He's had three appearances for me and in a goal. If we go to... He's not actually played any compet... Oh, no, he hasn't had three appearances for me. It must have been Rangers. Fair enough. Three appearances, one goal, but at least he's getting that plane, and, and that's exactly why I wanted to send him to Rangers. And I've only let people go out on loan who are definitely going to get the first-team football, you know, the, not act as cover for the first team or whatever. Chris Smith, another guy that came up from my youth setup. Uh, this guy's going to be amazing. When he's older, this guy is going to be amazing. I just know it. I can feel it within my bones. 16 years of age, so he's got a long way to come just yet. But, um, <clears throat> Scout Report, please. Uh, decent player for League One sides, but again, becoming a leading Premier Division striker. His progression is really good. He's been sent out on loan. Uh, let me go back to there. 
He's been sent out on loan, not played any games just yet. However, he is at Brighton, uh, and I think he should be playing games, because I said, you know, for him to be a first team. Either which way. Um, Ajay Boateng went out on a free. Harry Bum's gone out on a free. Nikolai Marin's gone out on a free. Three people I really didn't need. Stephen Hodge. Um, I don't know if you actually saw this guy. I think he was in my under 18s in my in my under 18 squad. Um, but I've sent him out on loan just to get himself that experience. He's probably not going to get any you know anywhere in this squad to be quite honest. But if I get him the experience, get in the the worth, then I can sell him on. Matthias Bosarts um, came back off loan that last season. Come into this squad but because he's 18 because I've got Mattia Nastasic I've got Kurt Zuma I've got Rafael Varane I've got Umtiti I really didn't need Matthias Bosat so I, I thought to myself rather than him just sitting there either in because he's 18 as well I didn't want to put him into my under 18 but I didn't want him to put into reserves I could have done that and he would be getting reserve team football but I'd rather him go out there and get the uh, the first team football played two games so far and got seven uh, rating which is you know, not bad, not bad. Gone to Middlesbrough. Sunderland get signed Scott Sinclair. Um, I wasn't using Scott Sinclair, and I felt no need to keep Scott Sinclair on, especially with the wages that he was on. I thought I can save a book here, and uh, I th I sold him to Sunderland for three million pounds, which I think Sunderland got an absolute bargain in Scott Sinclair there. Uh, Oliver Olivier Nacham. You saw me sign him, I think, in a couple of seasons back in my first season. I'm sure he was in my first season. Again, uh, he's a mid-centre guy, and I've got all the people that I need there in my first team and cover. I could put him in my, my reserve side. I don't want to put under 18, uh, 18 years old into my under 18s, and I'll show you why in a moment, because that, well, I'll show you why. Um, but Olivier Nacham, he's out there at uh, Birmingham getting first team experience. Jean-Marie Dongu has gone for a loan fee of 45k, uh, 45k per month to Watford. Um, another guy I don't need just yet. I've got Mbain Yang and I've got Aguero. And because I only use one striker, um, those two players are the only ones that actually get into the squad. Jean-Marie Dongu, he's 19 years of age. I didn't want to put him into my reserves. I wanted him to go out there and get that first team, so I sent him out. He's looking, he's looking not too bad, but he's, he just doesn't seem to perform to Jean-Marie, and I don't know why it is. Uh, Cosmin Triff, who was an exciting prospect, has really dropped in uh, my estimations in my scouting reports. You can see three and a half stars now. He was four and a half, I think he was, or maybe four. But I'd rather him go out there and get the, the, the first team experience. So he's going to be worth a bit when it comes around to it. He's going to be a right back. He's probably not going to see the light of day in my team, to be quite honest. Uh, but you never know. He's gone out on loan to Brighton. He could still, uh, you know, uh, gain some good experience over there. The next one, Mario Balotelli. I finally got rid of this guy. 10.75 million to Newcastle. Um, he did want 9,000 a week to be able to go over there, but I just give him it. And, you know, finally, I've got rid of Mario Balotelli. Um, he's played two, scored one for for Newcastle United. I think they've got a good player there for 10.75 million. I really do. And of course, we had to sell Sami Nasri. We had to sell Javi Garcia. So we sold Sami Nasri to the only team that actually wanted him, and that was Chelsea for £22 million. It was £22 million that wasn't a bulk sum either. We have it over you know a period of months. So our finances are going to look a little bit strange in the fact that we've got bumper payments coming from Chelsea from there. But it, it was sad to you know let go of Sami and Nasri, but he's 27, his time has come, and a hundred and odd grand wages a week now finally off our books. Javi Garcia has gone to Stoke for 9.25 million. What a bargain. It got to the stage where I really couldn't sell Javi Garcia at all. I put him I put his worth all the way down to uh, to like 12 million or something like that. And then Stoke made a bid. It was the only one that made a bid. I wasn't going to, you know, hang around and try and get the best price for him uh, because nobody else wanted him to be quite honest at the time. So I just I really needed him off the books in terms of wages. So there you go. Javi Garcia has gone to Stoke for 9.25 million. <laughs> what a player that Stoke have got there. What a player that Stoke have got. Timo Werner, another young promising guy that really didn't quite end up in the reports uh, to be any good. I mean, three and a half star, 
Mm. His progression's coming along, but I don't think that he's going to be a player that we're going to be wanting to use within our team. Striker look, 18 years old. We've got enough enough strikers there that have the potential to be better than Timo Werner. So the guy that I originally bought for 4.3 million pounds, when it comes to the stage where I can sell him for more than 4.3 million pounds, I will go ahead and do that. Demetrius Lazaridis, another young guy coming through the youth facilities. Um, he's in my under 18s. Uh, did I keep him in my under 18s? No, I sent him out on loan to Birmingham. Okay, that's fair enough. It's probably a reason why I did that. And it's probably the same reason what I said about earlier. Um, the scouting report here, another one that's got dropped down to three and a half star. Even though it's got really good progression going on, um, I don't think that this guy is going to be, you know, hanging around in the squad. So, uh, there you go. That's all the people in and out over this transfer window. Not some great amount of signings. Just a couple of young people that's come in. A couple of young people coming through my actual youth squad as well. So, it's nice to see that that has definitely started to happen. So, if we go now to Man City to the squad and then bugger off to the under-18s, you'll see why I don't need any more under-18s. Look at all these people. We've got so many people in my under-18s that it is absolutely sick. It is, oh, it's just unbelievable. We beat Southampton, I think it was 8-1 or something like that, my under-18 squad. And some real people to actually show you that I think... My under-18s has got to be the best squad in England. It really has to be the best English under-18 squad that there is. If people manage to get through my under-18s and through into the reserves without dropping in um, potential or anything like that, then they, that is the type of person I want in my team. I want people to be fighting for places down in the under-18s, and I want people to be scoring goals regularly, to be you know, doing the assists and stuff like that. A couple of people have already made real, real good progress in my eyes when it comes to you know me thinking this guy might be some good in the future. Patu Shimpe, this guy seems to score all the time. It's it's absolute, it's mental. Um, if I can, can I go into his history on that season? No, I can't. He's had, uh, currently this season, he's had two non-competitive games and had two two assists. So that's real, real good. Um, I'm sure he had non -com oh, there's none there, look. You can't see the non-competitive games from last season. That's a shame because he really did score quite a few goals. Patu Shimpe, 16 years of age, uh, 16 finishing already, determination of 20. What a thing to have as a striker. This guy, I'm keeping my eyes on. Barry Faber, oh my God. This guy could just get straight into my team. Um... Right now, I think. he w I already play people that ha are leading stars in the championship division. Um, his coach report says he's coming on in leaps and bounds. He will be a good player for most Premier Division sides, this guy. A good player for Premier Division sides. This guy is going to be amazing, but I want to give him the time. I don't want to just shove him straight into my team and then, you know... A, a risk burnout. I really don't want to give him that. Look, he's already on par with Dolafu, Chamberlain, and Leitner. Leitner, whatever you want to call him. And Victor Fischer as well, who's been a little bit disappointing, to be quite honest. Um, but I'm I'm just absolutely blown away at Barry Faber. This guy, I want to just keep hold of him forever, because he, look at this, because he's two and a half stars. He's already a good Premier Division player. He will get to five stars if this progression is really, really good. Um, he's probably not going to fully get to his potential, of course, because that would be just mental. But if he gets to anywhere near where his potential is... I mean, look at him. Three appearances, four goals. He's just absolutely bossing this. He's only on five... 0.7 grand a week and I, I want to keep him there you know I want to keep him here for for life if this is if they can pull off these amounts of, of, of good you know uh, appearances um, then oh my god I, I shudder to think what this guy is going to be capable of when he gets into my first team uh, <clears throat> probably next season I think I will bring him up into my first team give him he's only 17 I don't want to do it just yet I don't want to risk that burnout the under 18s, this under 18 squad is perfect for him because he will have to fight for his place all the time. Um, 
Roger Cruz is another guy that I believe is going to be another ledge when he's a, when he's a bit older, putting in some real solid performances across the board in in terms of form. Uh, going to the coach report, real good progression as well. And the defensive left is somewhere where we do need real good cover because um, what's his face? Oh, knob trees from over Holland where Jethro Willems, he. Um, is practically the only good left back, and I reckon that Roger Cruz is going to be another one, one of these good left backs. Um, a good player for most championship sides. He's not quite ready for it yet, but he is a defender. It takes a little bit more of a while for him. Augustine Oloa, look at this guy. Four appearances, five goals. So there you go. <laughs> that just says absolute wonders for Augustine. Really, really does. Uh, Chris Smith is another one that I think is going to be a real good guy when he's older. Um, and there was another person, where are you, or has he gone up, he might have gone up to my uh, reserves by now, I think he may have done actually, so let's pop over to the reserves, as you can see, Paolo Souza, that's the guy, um, going to be a ledge, wanted by six clubs, that's insane, um, 2016, so I'll be looking to you know shore up his contract at some stage. He's wanted by Aston Villa, Blackburn, Fulham, Norwich, Sporting, and minor interest from Arsenal, all on loans, by the way. I will not let my players go on loan if they're not going to be getting first-team football. That is simple as that. Sinan Bitwikwi is only two and a half stars, but this guy just keeps giving these performances that are absolutely fantastic. Scoring goals left, right, and centre from attacking mid-centre. Uh, so another guy to look out for there. Ross Barkley is still, unfortunately, in my reserves. I am probably going to be bringing him up into my normal squad at some stage because I do want to get um, cover for the likes of Leitner because now, of course, Aggie's going to be the guy up front. I've got to make sure that Leitner's got a decent cover behind him and that's going to be Ross Barkley. A lot of teams wanted him on loan, but I've decided to keep him there. Adrian Munoz, another guy who can play left or striker, um, 18 years of age, this guy um, is a little bit inconsistent for my liking, but let's go into his coach report, you can see he's not making great progression, I think he needs some more first team football for that to be honest, but he could become a leading Premier Division striker, he's already a decent player for most Premier Division sides. That's pretty decent. But I do want to send him out on loan. It's just nobody will actually loan him for first team for first football. Bosco Grahovac, another left mid guy who I think is going to be another ledge. I've got so many ledges in this team, it's ridiculous. I'm never going to keep them all, and I'm probably going to make some, uh, some dosh going forward, so I'm sure. But uh, this guy has been all right with his, with his form. Let's have a look at his coach apart. Four and a half. Already going to be a good player for most championship sides. Making good progression. Not very happy though. And I think that's because of his first team football. So I will be looking to try and loan uh, Bosco Grohovac out again. So that I can get him that first team football. So he's not going to be a bit pissed off with me. Fabrice Linger, You will know from like my last episodes. This guy's going to be also a good player. Another striker though, would you believe? So probably going to be one that I'm going to be selling. I'm not quite sure. Five appearances as a substitute and three goals. Speaks for itself. And of course, everybody else that's on loan. Jean Ertz. Jean Ertz. This guy, another guy that's going to be a real, real good player, I'm reckoning, for left back. Look at his progression is just insane. This guy's hitting his progression all over the goddamn place. And his happiness is really good as well. He's out on loan at uh, Storm, Storm God set, was it? Yeah, Storm God set. Um, along with... Where's he gone? John Guidetti, there he is. He's on loan at Storm Good set as well. But he's been scoring left, right and centre. Um, especially recently, if we go to his stats, he's had some competitive Euro Cup ones. And uh, every time I seem to look at him, he always scored. So, there you go. European Under-21 Championship qualifying. Six appearances, five goals. So, I mean, it's just going to be great, isn't it? It's just going to be absolutely fantastic. Let's go on to the, uh, the fixtures for Man City. And you can see... Since the start of the season, we had a 2-0 win against Hangzhou. Mbei Niang and Samuel Umti is scoring both the goals. We had a 2-1 loss against Guangzhou. Sergio Agui scoring. And then them people scoring. 3-2 <laughs> uh, friendly against Lever uh, Leverkusen. So we won that. 
Sergio Aguero, Mbain Yang and Fabrice Linger actually winning the game for us in 90 plus 2 minutes. But when Stefan Kiesling scored in the 88th, you're just asking for another goal back, to be quite honest. Uh, one all against Sevilla. Of course, Bosco Grahovac this time scored the only goal for us. Al Jazeera, a 3-all thriller. Matej Nastasic, Augustine Olwok, and again Fabrice Linga with another goal. Um, they scored in the 89th. Nice that we scored in the 90th. Lovely. And then onto the league itself. This was insane. We had a 5-2 win, but look at this. Four go it was 4-0 before the 19th minute. We were that good. Then Aguero added a second. Then Jay Rodriguez for Southampton scoring two in two minutes uh, to at least claw something back for Southampton. But look at this. 11 shots, nine on target. That's the kind of shit I want to see. That's the kind of shit. And then a two-all draw against Liverpool. Would you believe? 90 plus second. Now, I've kept the ball, and I tried to keep the ball as much as possible, but it, they just weren't keeping the ball quite obviously there and then he went and scored in the last minute of added time great I had two injuries as well one to Dolafu and one to Fisher both of them were my left mids by the way but luckily for me I have people that can play absolutely everywhere so that I had people to keep putting back Jar Dolafu got injured so I put Victor Fisher in Victor Fisher got injured so I then put Alvaro Vadillo in um, nice to have that kind of cover so at 2-0, we've got a point from uh, from Liverpool, so that's not too bad, and nothing to be sniffed at. PSG we've got next in the Euro Super Cup, but of course that result will be coming in a future episode. And that's pretty much it for this episode, guys. Started my third season, I'm looking forward to getting onto it, and we'll see where we end up in the future. We've won the Champions League once already, so that is a nice tick off the list. We want to win the league, and we want to make sure that we've got nice finances going on for Man City. If we go into the finances so far, we are making profits all across the board. Now, like I said, this might be inflated because of the fact that Chelsea owe me money. Um, the expenditure at the minute, this month, player wages is £6 million. We are nearly at the end. I'm going to see what it's going to be like over the next couple of months. We've got the income there. Uh, TV revenue is over £6 million, so that's not too bad. But it's not going to always be like that, is it? You've got to remember that. Players sold. That's not always going to be there. Um, interest. What's all that about? That's income. Oh, right, okay. Interest on the, yeah, on the balance that we've got. Match day income, of course. Grants. God knows what they are. Um, look at the gate receipts. Season ticket sales. We had a lot of season ticket sales. We actually, I think we equaled or even maybe slightly bettered our season ticket sales this time around um, but that's about it I think that is about it total player wage budget current player wage total 1.4 million a week so that's 1.4 million now that's actually come down quite a lot uh, we've only got two key players we've only got two first team players that's brilliant I like that uh, because it allows me to just bring people in and drop people whenever I goddamn feel like it. Um, without them whinging at me too much. So, uh, what was it again? 1.4 million a week would make it to be, what? 1.4, 2.8, 4, 5.6 million a month-ish. There are thereabouts. So I think the 6 million there is, you know, like the, the top amount of... of of wage there so expenditures quite a lot what's this what's this non-footballing costs and why is it so fucking high I'm going to have to have a look into some of these bits and bobs guys and see if I can't get these down a little bit more but we've got transfer budget we've got an 81 million in, in there we've got so much wage budget I, you know, it's just ridiculous. I could change all my transfer into wage budget and end up with 3.7 million a week um, it really doesn't matter it really, really doesn't matter. Training facilities in progress, youth facilities in progress, balance is just under under 100 million, and I think we're going in the right direction to really showing um, that this team is going to be the best team in the world. I'm reckoning it will be the best team in the world. These guys, don't forget, are still, um, apart from Mika Richards, who will be leaving us, and uh, Aguero, who will be leaving us at the end of the season, we've 
our oldest player then is of course Joe Hart, but he's going to be he's got another couple of seasons left yet. Um, but the other oldest player is Jack Rodwell at 23 years old, and he already existed here. So all the other guys, 20 years old, we've got a good six seasons with these yet. We've got a good six years of improvement throughout the squad and improvement throughout the team. So well, that's the door, guys, and that's my uh, my thing to get going. So anyway, until next time, stay safe.